Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I'm gonna give you guys a crash course on identifying and figuring out how to come up with hero pairings. So I think it's really important that players have a good understanding of how to actually arrive at what is a good hero pairing compared to just kind of copying and pasting what players put out there of saying, hey, here's what, you know, here's the comp you should be running or, hey, here's a tier list, whatever it may be. Even though those can be good to, to, to an extent, I think it's more important for the average player to be able to identify and figure out your own hero pairings because you understand what the process is to assess and then how to put good pairings together and why. So this video is going to be that. It's going to be breaking it down, educating, informing you, and explaining how you can come up with good pairings by giving you a couple examples and by abiding by a couple core, I don't know if I want to say principles, but just beliefs, right? Uh, beliefs is probably a lack of word. Let's just go with processes again that you want to follow through on. So number one is going to be, you need to identify the range of the hero, right? So example, Nika, someone like Melee, if I go to Lilia, someone like Very Far, right? So you have to identify, is it Melee, Near, Far, or Very Far? General of thumb here is that you always want to put your secondary hero the range on your secondary hero has to be farther at equal to or farther than your primary hero. Because if, for example, let's say that you attached Nico as your primary, uh, has, has medium range, but then you were to attach Nika as your secondary, well, Nika's melee. So Nika's active skill will not go off on anyone because you're going to be attacking from range. Nika needs to be up close. So this wouldn't work. That's why we say you always want to go. Now, if you did Nika as primary and then you did Nico as secondary, you're fine. Why? Because the secondary hero has a farther range, attack range, than the primary. Uh, okay, so that's number one. Number two is identifying compatibility. And this usually is from looking at what tier type are they so are they infantry are they marksmen are they mage are they celestials um, are they cav these are things you need to figure out because there can be a benefit and this is probably as of recording this there's not a plethora level of amount of heroes so it's not as though you can double up and have five legendary um legions where you have two marksmen two legendary marksmen per legion there's just not enough for any of those types for to really specialize in that way eventually i'm sure there will be but just not right now um, right the closest thing you could probably do would be to put you know four to five legions of marksmen where the marksmen are the primary then you're putting kind of a secondary on there same thing for um, more or less the the rest of the types as well but that's what you want to identify is figuring out do you want to double up um, on legendary, so the example here would be if you went like Nico Kanara or Kanara Nico, right? Because Nico's marksman. And then if we go to <coughs> Kanara, marksman PvP as well. This is an example of um, one type of pairing that you can identify. But let's do a little bit more of a deep dive, right? So if you look at Kanara, active skill, damage, skill damage factor, that basically just means like this is just a direct attack. Uh, Kanara deals hero skill damage to the enemy legion, so it's basically, again, a single flat DPS attack. Target damage dealt reduction, right, re uh, re decreases all damage they deal, right, so that basically lowers their DPS output. Second skill, normal attack damage bonus. Hero skill damage taken reduction, uh, right, so it'll say, and takes, uh, Kanara's legion will take less uh, hero skill damage that's done on them. Third skill, all marksman units in Kanara's legion will gain physical attack. Again, that's pretty good. And then you have uh, Kanara's Legion, a 20% chance to gain physical repost, inflict slow upon the target, increasing your Legion's physical counterattack damage, dealt by 10% and reducing the target's mark speed. Then we go to this. This is an additional skill. 
So when Kanara's Legion launches a normal attack, they have a 20% chance to inflict defense break on the target Legion, reducing their defense by 20% for three seconds. So you get a defense break, which basically is almost kind of like penetration, I guess the way I would view it, if you're coming from like League of Legends or another game, right? It's like armor pen, magic pen, etc. right? When you're doing a defense break, it just means you're going to output more damage, right, for that, for those three seconds. If you were to look at Nico's toolkit, primary right skill damage factor so you have a direct target and then he also inflicts defense break so you kind of have like this double defense break that you're inflicting um, except one's an additional skill right that could go off any point and this is an active um, and then you have your third skill which you have marksman unit physical attack defense bonus again this plays into marksman right so when you're looking at Nico and Kanara, you can say this is a really good pairing, right? Because, again, they're marksmen. They're factoring in. You have additional counterattack damage, additional normal attack damage. I mean, again, this is good, right? You also have this additional defense break as well, um, right? 80%. And then also, or a legion that has, so it says when Nico's legion launches a normal attack on a target that already has defense break, they have an 80% chance to deal additional. So, Kanara's defense break on top of Nico's defense break just increases the odds for Nico's passive to proc more often so this again when you're understanding and you're reading the toolkit on the skills it starts to make sense especially as we walk through it in this video um, another example of someone that probably plays very well into mage but probably more into dps is if you're looking at how to identify what if i don't have enough heroes right well what type of heroes would i use for good secondaries if i am out of ones to uh, of ones to run that might be of the same type well then you can start looking at what i would consider to be overall heroes right so if you were to look at some of the heroes here one example would be thea thea is overall overall heroes is a great way to identify opportunities to run kind of flex picks as secondaries and i'll give you a really good example right a hero that we don't have unlocked but we may over time is someone like hosk so the primary is you get attack bonus, HP bonus, damage dealt bonus, um, defense reduction, right? But this is when launching a rally. We get to the third skill, which is probably Hosk's best skill that a lot of people will look at, is <clears throat> increases a legion's defense by 10% when the commander, when Hosk is the commander, and their normal attack damage by 15, but up to 40% if you're looking here, when Hosk is the deputy. So a lot of uh, players that I have been seeing like and tend to run Hosk as a secondary, not only take advantage of the active, but also the third skill, and then even the fourth skill, which can increase legion capacity, right? You get an extra 15k legion capacity off a of Hosk. He's got an additional skill as well, which after Hosk Legion receives a buff effect, their normal attack crit rate is increased by 6%, and their counterattack crit rate is increased by 6%, up to a maximum of 30% for 6 seconds. So this is something that I'll often like. I mean, dude, I see people running Kanara Hosk, Nico Hosk, just because of the uh, DPS crit, and then <clears throat> also because of the uh, just high increased normal attack damage. So Hosk is a good example of someone, again, you'd have to spend for him, but a good example of someone that can impact. Now, if you're looking for a budget-friendly example, this is why it's important to read skill tips, right? Eliana, I think, is a good budget example where you have a very far range, which basically means that the active can apply at any point. You get physical damage and you get a shield. So she's kind of like this mini Madeline, if you will, in that regard. You also get the well that's for peacekeeping but you get normal attack damage reduction right so eliana's legion will take less up to 30 percent less normal attack damage right so that's not bad you could even use eliana even as like someone that you would run in like a tank comp right or an off tank comp right someone like if you wanted to run garwood eliana uh, right because you're taking less general normal attack which means you're going to survive a lot plus you get the defense stats so when casting rage skills eliana's legion gains shelter increasing their defense by 10 up to 30 percent for five seconds and then you have this one right which is an additional skill grants a divine shield to eliana's legion giving them 70 percent chance to receive healing when attacked this effect can be triggered once every three seconds so an example of this is let's say you don't want to consider running eliana as a flex pick on a dps comp you could also run Eliana, uh, someone on a tank comp, right? So it's kind of like Madeline Garwood is, is like one of the ultimate 
if not the ultimate kind of tank comp currently. I mean, there, there's other picks you could probably work in as well. But let's say you want to go budget friendly. You could go Garwood Eliana and take advantage of that. Why? Garwood's a tank. Also has some healing that you get here from the enhanced, right? Heals lightly wounded units in Garwood's Legion and grants them resistance, reducing all damage taken by 20% for four seconds. This one says the healing factor is 1400, grants them resistance 20% for six seconds. Um, and you can see this healing factor, right? Heals lightly wounded units every time the active goes off up to 1200 and damage taken reduction. So Garwood being a, a good legendary tank can pair with Eliana for a little bit more tank, a little more sustain, and even more healing that you're able to get, which means you'll last longer out in the field. This is why it's important to read the toolkit, like I said before, reading the skills that heroes offer, and then getting a good understanding. And then once you have that figured out, and these are just a couple examples, but once you have that figured out and you have identified this, then it's a matter of just going down which talent tree do you want to use and who do you want to use it for as hopefully we don't knock anything over and we'll probably do that in a later video but i just wanted to give you an example here and i'll give you one more on the mage side right so eliana uh, liliana or lilia <laughs> excuse me is you know probably one of the best meta mages right now veln or velen is probably the next the next best you could probably you could probably argue one and two there and then it's probably waldir as like the easy number two or number three but if you look at lilia right you can see here if i look at the active it says deal serial skill damage to the target and another nearby so you're looking at an aoe active skill 10 percent chance of scorch dealing hero skill damage um, so you have skill damage and probability. Second skill, Lilia's deals 10%. Oh, hang on, that's the peacekeeping one. All magic units in Lilia's Legion gain 10% magic attack and 4% HP, up to 20 and 10% max. Then we get to the fourth skill, which is a passive. When Lilia's Legion launches a normal attack, they have a 10% chance to scorch up to two surrounding enemy legions uh, if the target legion is scorched. Um, and so you see the probability up to 30%. Now, here we go to the ultimate. So we're enhancing Flames of Vengeance, which is the active. And you can see deals hero skill damage to the target and two nearby legions. So that's three people. It's an AoE skill for, right? Um, again, magic damage effect factor is the same. Uh, but you're seeing here, that's the big thing. It's just adding on another legion, right? You still have the same thing with the score, dealing hero damage. But then you look at someone like Veln, for example, and I'll give you an example with Walder as well. Active skill for Veln deals hero skill damage to the target and two surrounding legions. So you're looking at two AoE heroes here that, again, could complement each other if you're trying to go all in on some type of AoE glass cannon build. That's something that a Veln, Lilia, Lilia, Veln could could work well with um walder is there as well and this is another example where you got march speed hero skill damage dealt third skill magic unit hero skill crit rate right so that's something that's interesting this could even pair well with hosk as an example right because remember as we're reading and we're remembering right if we go back to hosk you can see here that hosk's uh, ultimate or his additional skill, right? Um, after Hosk's Legion receives a buff effect, their normal attack crit rate is increased by 6% in counterattack, right? So that's normal attack crit rate. If we go back to Veln, you go, oh, hang on, where was I? Did we miss it? Da -da 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 -da. Let's go, was it third skill? Here we go. So this is magic unit hero skill crit rate bonus. So all magic units in Veln's Legion gain 4% hero skill, 4% uh, hero skill crit rate and defense rate well i guess it would just be applying the normal attack right because this is even though it says magic unit hero i guess the way this is reading is it's hero skill crit rate so maybe the crit rate wouldn't apply because it's just normal attack damage on hosk but again you kind of get the picture on being able to recall something if you take time to you read all the heroes toolkits you can play it out and think about oh well hey would this work ah maybe that wouldn't work or you know what i thought i read something else let me go back there and read that again man i think this actually could be something here that we that i could test out in the future these are things that you'll get from there and then another example is if you look at someone like Waldir, right, an epic mage, you can see we click on the active, deals hero skill damage to the target and two nearby lesions, this doing magic damage and inflicts gloom. So again, Waldir uh, being able to do damage uh, to the target and two nearby lesions, that's three units very similar to Lilia and Veln. So this is why it's important to take time, read through the skills, uh, and once you read through skills, you'll be able to get a better understanding of what type of comps are viable, what may work, 
Um, you may even do things like comparing the amount of skill damage factor that heroes are doing, looking at some of the numbers in that way, is also important. But like I said, knowing what the attack range is, knowing that it's a similar unit type, and then reading through the toolkit, the skill toolkit, and getting and trying to get an understanding of which skills may complement others is a great way to start from so you can start getting a good understanding of how to put hero pairings together just like we did and we found out hey there's a couple that worked uh, well, you know we, we tried to look for one but that one didn't work these are just things that and I should say steps that you should be taking so you yourself can figure out and come to a good understanding where you can feel confident about what you're speaking to because it makes sense, right? And you're not just kind of copy pasting, as I've said before, from anyone that puts out. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do, but I just value players being able to understand themselves and being able to also confidently explain that to other people on why this pairing is good because you took time to study and to educate yourself. With that in mind, that is gonna do it for me. As always, I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what you think about this video. Uh, did it make sense? Did it help you figure out a pairing on your own? Did you come to the realization that, hey, this, uh, this, maybe this one pairing is really good, and then you end up finding out that, wow, well, this is actually being used consistently, or it, maybe it is being used in the meta, but because you don't know what the meta is, you just, fig you just figured it out on your own, right? I would love to hear if anyone has had some success there, uh, and again, right? Anything, and, and also I'll say lastly, if there's anything there that uh, maybe you're someone who does a lot of fighting right now and you've come up with your own process or, or, or your own way on how to identify good hero pairings, please let us know in the comments down below. I think that I think that would be found or uh, could be found or should be found to be uh, educational as well. So that is going to do it for us. As always, I hope you enjoy. Until next time, I will catch you later.